Hey there! My name is Cassandra Pierce and I researched Noel Webster. A lot of people know him as the guy who wrote the dictionary. Um, another word for somebody who wrote a dictionary is a lexicographer, which I didn't know until this research, but that's pretty interesting. So Noel Webster is a lexicographer. Um, he was also known as a famous textbook pioneer, a political writer, editor, and a prolific author, meaning he wrote a numerous amount of books. You can, a lot of, well, a lot of people call him the father of American scholarship and education. So he was a pretty big deal. So back to his dictionary, which we all know him for. The first one he wrote was in 1806. It was the first true Amer American dictionary, um, of course, in English language. Um, and after completing this, he went on to make the big one we all know about, which was called an American Dictionary of the English Language. That broke, so his first one was in 1806. The second was in 1828. So there's a time difference, but it was what they call his magnum opus. A magnum opus is an author's largest work or his best work, you know, what he's well, best well known for. So that was his, the, the big dictionary that everybody uses. Um, in his magnum opus, the big dictionary, there was 70,000 entries. So it was 70,000 different words and 12,000 of which were never used before. So that was a pretty big deal. Um, it created a whole new standard for lexicographing or lexicography, I'm sorry. So, along with his dictionary, he he really made a big difference in the in the American English language. Uh, while writing his dictionary, he learned 26 languages, which is crazy because I'm struggling to do two. Um, but he did this because he wanted to he wanted to learn the origins of his own country's tongue. And it also kind of helped him a little bit while writing the dictionary. So which is pretty interesting that he can learn so many different languages and most of us struggle to learn two or three. Um, some of the first or some of his distinct words, I guess you could say, was skunk, hickory, and chowder. He wanted to standardize American speech because Americans all over use different different ways different languages different ways of saying things they pronounce things differently spelled it differently and he just really wanted basic rules that everybody could go by and it was just said all over so he also thought a lot of spelling conventions were very confusing so to write a dictionary this man really tried to help out us by changing words and when he did, he, tr he did change a couple of words. Here are three right here. Um, he, this was the first way it was written, and this is how he revised it. So, you know, we have music, center, and uh, plow right here. And then, of course, some words he tried to revise did not go so well. So, here we have tongue and women he tried to change, which... Did not go so successfully, but at least he was able to change a couple. He was just trying to make things simple for us. <clears throat> and um, so because of that, people called him what they call the English language speller reformer. That's a tongue twister, but that's what they called him. Because he tried to reform words, which makes sense. But he really tried to do it to the extent of how they were pronounced or how they look. You know, how they would really sound. <clears throat> and he he thought a lot of things were complex and unnecessary, which is why he tried to revise words the way that he did. So when he did that, um, he got a lot of references, you know, a lot of connections as he went along while writing the dictionary and while editing and stuff like that. But uh, John Angelo, who was an Eng English professor at the University of Georgia, he, he states that American spellings were invented by Noah Webster. Even though he didn't originate them, he did help influence certain spellings, popular spellings, I guess you could say. But no, he did not originate them. He did not come up with them. Um, you can pretty much say that Webster 
was an innovator and in his words an innovator was not something like he made up uh, his way of innovating was to make improvements to something and he tried to do that the whole time he was editing and writing he just wanted to make improvements to make things better and in his dictionary or a lot of people don't realize that Noah Webster is a pretty big Christian um, and he actually had 6,000 Bible references in his dictionary and they actually try to de demonstrate the use of the word so you can better understand it. Um, one of his favorite famous quotes is, education is useless without the Bible, which I agree. But a lot of people don't know that he was a big Christian the way that he is. Um, and the, the, the sad part while writing his dictionary is that he ran into financial problems while revising it. And it was during his second edition, I believe. So, in order to get it published, he had to mortgage his home, and he pretty much went broke. Um, shortly after this happened, he died. This was after the big magnum opus had been just been published. He died shortly after. And so, two people we know, George and Merriam Webster, George, sorry, George and Charles Merriam Webster, bought it, bought all of the unsold copies of his dictionary after he died. And when they did that, they also bought the secured rights to revise any of it. However, they did not get the magnum opus. They did not buy the rights to that one. They bought the uh, rights to an American dictionary of the English language corrected and enlarged. So it's not his, they didn't really, they didn't buy the big one that they, that everybody knows Noah Webster by. So that's a good thing. So um, in conclusion, I guess you could say Noah Webster was very strong-willed, devout, and determined. He made a huge impact in history and uh, and still today because everybody still uses the Noah Webster dictionary. I know I do, especially in school. So, but his work inspired other authors in their use of language and truthfully the dictionary is a book everybody should have in their library because it's full of wisdom, knowledge and information. So thank you guys for listening. I hope you enjoyed. Feel free to leave comments. Thank you.